All right. Let me just check my... Oh, my voice meter is ticking off. All right. Um, good morning, America. America. And everybody else from around the world that are tuning in. I know we got a few um, people um, from various countries. And my chat is empty, but I know I'm on a delay. So we'll just make the assumption that um, we have guests. And what we're looking at today. All right. So um, the ADP report came out and I uh, had talked about what the ADP report was in my morning meeting um, uh, video. So um, shoot over to that and have a listen and get your bias for the day. Um, and we'll, we'll look at some short term charts today. So the ADP report is out. It's half of what it was last month. Last month, that was a scary number um, in non farms caused the market to tank. Um, um, and then, yet you know, the feds came in and put the kibosh on uh, everything uh, um, a week or so ago. So, um, yeah, this is encouraging um, that uh, there are less uh, jobs created than um, than um, the month before. And that's what we want to see. We see a slowdown. And I know the feds are bitching and moaning and saying we're in for pain the whole nine yards. But, yo, first of all, we know that they react. That everybody wants to call it pivoting. But if you ask me, they don't pivot. They, they're reacting to the data at hand, and I have to respect that. That's what um, I want to see them do. Um, hey, Anth, good morning. Thanks for joining me, man. Um, and um, I'm confident that um, based on the data at hand, they're going to um, roll around and not be as aggressive as they're stating they're going to be right now. Um, I'm not trading on that. Like the feds, I trade data at hand. Um, so, um, I'm not jumping on it, um, right now. Uh, well, you know what? The long term, that's kind of my bias. That's what I'm buying. I'm buying on dips. I think the dips are good to buy, good value in it. Um, but I digress. We're looking at the short term here on the, uh, live stream. Um, the EIA reports come out at 1030. Historically, I've found that the morning uh, sessions before um, the EIA, very choppy, no, no direction. Once um, the EIA comes out, then um, you, you, know, you get uh, good momentum in the market. Um, and that's my bias. So I'm going to be very conservative. Um, well, I guess I'm, that's all I'm saying this week uh, because we have non-farm payroll on Friday. Um, but I'm going to be conservative in, in my trades and, um, you know, same setups, break up, breakouts and reversals and things like that. But, um, my size is going to be limited. Um, tomorrow, um, we get manufacturing, um, which is cool. The, um, they're expecting it to slow down a little bit, but this number I think is eventually going to start to, um, rise because they're bringing manufacturing back onto the shores. Good, good deal. Friday is non-farm payroll. But um, today, um, really what's influencing us, um, Chicago PMI might say something. Maybe it'll give us a little insight into um, the, the fact that we peaked. Um, and, and that's what they're, they're saying in, in the expectations of the number um, being lower than the previous. They're, they're, they're saying that we've hit the peak and we've rolled. The peak came slower than we thought. And um, because of that, the Fed looks like they have mud on their face. And hey, producer, what's going on, buddy? Um, thanks for joining us. Um, so, um, so he couldn't nail the peak, but here's the peak and now it's going to roll around. And, um, I guess you could say inflation's transitory, right? Even if it lasts for two years, it's transitory. Um, and yo, we got, uh, Bostic speaking at 1030, no big deal. So, um, 10 uh, at 630, I'm sorry. Um, 1030 is the big number. Um, so here. <clears throat> let's let's look at um, some shorter term charts on the SPX, which is what we primarily trade here at Off Grid Trading. Hey, by the way, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like. Um, there are some links down in the um, description if you guys want to make a donation. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, the the success of the channel is is um, due to the support of the public. Um, so, thanks for all your contributions, everybody. Everybody. Um, so what are we looking at, man? Um, really, 30 minutes just in consolidation right now. It's really not telling me anything. Um, there's a slight uptrend on the futures. Looks like it could be a trend reversal. 
we're going to have to break the high of um, the day on the futures, which is around 40.18. And <clears throat> I mean, we're about 12 points off of that right now. If we break that uh, 40.18, then, then we're rocking and rolling. So today, um, right now, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? What am I feeling? I'm looking at that daily. The daily kind of hit around the area that I want to see it hit. Um, 60 minute, it's not really telling me. I mean, the 60 minute is bearish. It's in a downtrend, man. You know? I got nothing. I got nothing. It's all a matter of what happens when the market uh, opens. And... Yeah, what more could we say, man? Um, <clears throat> all right, so it seems like everything's working well. Oh, who else we got here? Morning. Oh, Mr. Gilbert. Look at that. We're getting so many people on this site. Gilbert. Good morning, free folk. Yeah, the free folk of the world. I don't know. I think I'm 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 falling off of that tude right now. I'm feeling I'm feeling rather um, capitalistic. Um, at least that's going to be my primary focus for the next year. It's going to be a rough year, man. I don't do well in cold weather, and I'm going to be stuck up in the cold weather. Focusing on uh, money making. I got a few projects going on. I got this thing I want to uh, I want to get pushing. Um, but yeah. I, I, I don't know. There's just something in me that just makes me feel like I'm making money. So now's a good time. I got some old folks I got to attend to. So that's what I'm doing, man. That's what I'm doing. I'm attending to the old folks. Um. And trying to make that money. Make the money. Axe, axe, axe. I'm really getting into hatchets and axes. So when I was a kid, I used to um, fight. Um, and um, I, actually, the, 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 my primary um, style was Okinawan Kempo. Although I took, um, um, I, I studied under uh, um, a Taekwondo um, master and a uh, also a, um, a Walsh Kempo I believe it was called it was actually with the American fighting team and um, so anyway um, in in Okinawan Kempo you would you, you know you're, you're, you're it's like um, your major is open hand because that's what karate is all about um, love the cold uh, hate it hate it, hate the cold ant. and um, like you you have to minor in a weapon and um, you know, you can minor in um, sticks, or you can minor in um, the 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 staff, or or um, uh, nunchucks. Um, my minor was in edged weapons, and I've got this thing for edged weapons for knives and swords and stuff like that. So, um, so as of late, I've been just really into um, um, tomahawks and hatchets and. Yeah, you know that style of fighting, and and part of my workout is um, that I do part of my kata because it you know it works your whole body. It's like doing yoga, but it's just a lot more interesting to me. Yeah, you know, um, you, you know, a yoga in a fighting style, or like a tai chi. You know, tai chi is interesting because that's really a yoga in a fighting style. So um, yeah, I was just looking at some axes. I'm just burning time right now. Please tell me it was nunchucks. No, I mean, yeah, you know, I could use them, but I'm I wouldn't fight with them. I don't find them practical. You can't you can't carry them. You, you know, I'd much rather be um, um, efficient in um, an edge sword or um, a hatchet. Um, or, you know, a blade than nunchucks because it doesn't make sense. And, and um, I mean, unless I'm – okay, so initially nunchucks were created to separate the rice from the husk, right? And that's what they would use back in the day. They'd use a nunchuck to separate the rice from the husk, beating the rice. And because um, China, the communist cocksuckers that they are, um, wouldn't let um, – 
the average individual own weapons, people trained with whatever was there. So all the Chinese weapons, you know, like the pitchfork, the, the, the bow, um, the nunchuck, they were all farming implements. And, uh, you know, the bow was just a staff that was used to carry water and buckets and stuff like that. You know, they laid it across the shoulders, buckets on each end and carried it. So um, that's why they carried the, the, they trained with the nunchuck. So for me, it has no practical, um, it has no practical applications, you know. But if I carry a knife or I carry a hatchet, I mean, it's, it's, it has practical applications. I mean, I'm in the woods and I'm on a boat and the hatchet or the knife is handy. An edged blade is handy anywhere. I mean, yet, you know, if I'm carrying a nunchuck on the boat, I don't know, yet, you know, am I going to beat um, a line um, in half, I mean, obviously not. So anyway, I, I mean, I look at that too. Like, what's the practicality? Why carry it? I mean, yeah, you know what? And I've carried um, a knife my whole life. I just have this thing about knives. I don't know if I'm reincarnated from some medieval knight or something, but I have this thing about knives. I always carried them. Um, I've always found them handy. You know, like uh, I'm always in a situation where I need a knife. You know, whether it's cutting an apple in half to feed a horse or um, cutting a string for a kid on a a, a balloon. You, you know. Um, I know that you move where you put your hand up to your nose and they can't poke you in the eyes. Ha ah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, I have the knife on me and I could use it in self-defense, never really needed it. Um, yeah, you know, and even when I was a kid, if, if I was brawling, because I used to love bar brawls when I was younger, um, I mean, I never used a weapon. I just, if I was taking a beating, I took a beating, yeah, you know, but back in the day, nobody was really trying to fuck you up. It was just fun just having a bar brawl. So, um, so yeah, again, um, it's a practical weapon, but uh, yeah, that's a cool move. Um, well, I remember when I first started studying with my sten sensei, um, the first move he showed me, he kind of got in this position, like one hand out, one hand at his hip, you know, um, his strong leg forward, one leg slightly back. Um, and he said, you know, you take the stand and then he pivoted on his feet, turned around and started to run. He goes, that's the first defensive move I'm going to teach you. And he said, if you, if you're not alive, I can't teach you how to fight. He said, so the best karate method is run. So, yeah, you know, in theory, what he was trying to say, which it was comical, um, what he's trying to say is, um, you know, it's better to avoid fights. So, yeah, the poke in the uh, nose, the, the hand poking the nose, poking the eyes thing is, you know, comical. So along those lines. So anyway, yeah, it was, that's pretty cool. I like to think back on those days. I liked uh, my sensei. Knife is useful in arts and craft. Um, yeah, man, a, a, a knife, yo, dude, you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's why we survived as a species, because we developed an edged weapon, you, you know? Um, I mean, it used to just be a pointed rock, you, you know? Um, but we developed that edge rep weapon, and, and that gave us the edge. Um, yeah, run is good, man. Yo, you know what? No need for violence. I mean, it was fun back when I was a kid. I mean, it was like playing football. You know, you go into a bar, you get boozed up, everybody's wild, you, you know, and, and you brawl and, you, you know, you tear up a bar. And um, that's cool. And it used to be easy for me because I'm a little dude, man. I'm only about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you know, maybe about 170 pounds and I'm thick. But, um, but when I was a kid, I mean... Yo, I think when I got married, I was 124 pounds. When I got married, I guess I was 23, and um, this is not the woman I'm with. I, I was married and then split. Um, but um, I looked like I was 16, so it was easy to get in a bar fight because I look so young, I look so small. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, I was raised in Brooklyn. My old man used to kick the shit out of me all the time. So, you know, the beatings I caught in the street didn't mean anything. So, you know, I was scrappy as a young guy. Um, and, and it was unexpected. So, you know, everybody had a big mouth with Dave at the bar. But, you know, then it was just off because I just enjoyed a good brawl. Um, and then, you know, my buddies were very protective of me. So that was it. You know, the bars used to go off. But it was always fun. It was always just good fun. It was like playing football, just a good contact sport. You're not allowed to do that anymore. You, you know, you're not allowed to be a guy or a boy, or, you know, rough and tumble. That shit is politically incorrect, and you're looked at as a villain. But, yet, you know, back in the day, nobody really, I mean, you weren't into cutting people or shooting up bars and shit like that, you know. I mean, occasionally a guy got hit with a chair here and there. But, um, 
nothing nothing terrible and that's what's missing you, you know like guys are at home playing video games and shooting shit and they don't realize they could just go to a bar and you know play a little contact football without the football um do you still pal around with kids you grew up with oh yeah man um my boys are my boys um as a matter of fact i was just texting uh with one of them um yeah you know and 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 they all turned out very diverse some are very um wealthy uh developers some are just carpenters yeah you know but um there was probably about 12 or 13 of us and um we all worked in the gas stations along this major strip and then um everybody in the neighborhood started to refer to us as um a portion of the name and i'm not giving out the details because yeah you know you, 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 you i mean i could be you, you you could pretty much figure me out by these details but um it was almost like a community and um yeah or, or uh, a club you know and they referred to the 12 of us like that and um yeah you know i mean from the time we all some of the guys um go back um to um early junior high and then other guys go back to um, early high school. And um, we've been friends ever since. And it's very funny because when I meet people that I knew in school, they say, are you still friends with? And I couldn't imagine because these guys are like my brothers. I mean, you know, we've been to everybody's wedding. We've, um, I, I mean, we've watched each other raise our children. Our children t think of each other as cousins. They, call, they refer to me as uncle, which makes me uncomfortable. But you know, they refer to me as, as, as uncle. And, um, yeah, we're, I mean, it's all good. It's, it, we're like all friends. I mean, some of them are, um, physical therapists and, um, other guys are insurance agents. One guy owns a big concrete plant. Um, another guy, um, works at, um, um, tractor supply. Another guy's a straight up gangster. But yeah, and you know what? We haven't lost any of us either, you, you know. Um, odds are it's either me or the gangster who's going to end up uh, dead first. I mean, that's pretty much the gamble. I mean, both he and I are, are competing with heart attacks. I had two. And um, he had, um, he, he's on his third. Actually, I had one um, in June, believe it or not. But I mean, I'm so, I, I, I'm so aware of it that I knew um, that it was coming. I mean, I drove myself to the hospital. I cut that shit off at the pass. It was like nothing. You, you know, it was like I sprained my wrist. I was in one day, you know, threw a quick uh, stint in the heart, opened up another artery, and boom, I was back in the gym. So now I'm back up to 100 push-ups a day. So apparently, um, um, I do that every 10 years. I guess I'm going to have a heart attack every 10 years. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I figure what the fuck. I don't, I mean, the next one might get me. Um, but, uh, hey, I digress, waiting for this market to go off. Um, or if I'm lucky, I'm going to have a beautiful death and I'll get taken out in the fucking storm in the middle of the ocean. That way I don't get old and decrepit and useless and boring. Ugh. Uh, yo, there are some things in my mind that are just worse than death. Yeah, bad genetics, man. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I eat well. I eat healthy. I just produce a lot of uh, cholesterol, apparently, and a lot of um, toxins. Like, a lot of shit that you do in your youth um, it, 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 um, damages or, or, or kind of sets your path for your old age. Like, I don't take a lot of drugs now, and... Um, I don't take any drugs now, actually, um, and I don't smoke cigarettes. But up until I was about 44, yo, I was I gave Keith Richards a run for his money. I mean, I loved to party. I, I worked hard. I worked all day, and when I partied, I partied hard. And um, hard and for days. I mean, I don't even drink now, and it's not because I, I consciously am avoiding it. I think I've just drank my fill, and I have no interest. Yeah, you know, like I did my quota and uh, I did it quick. But I started partying really when I was like 14. I mean, the neighborhood I grew up in, everybody was all about um, about drinking. And, and I start. I, I mean, I got drunk when I was 14. I think I stayed drunk until I went to work. I mean, I could barely remember high school. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, when I was a kid, the drinking age was 18. And, um, you, you know, I had changed my permit which I got when I was 16 to say I was 18. And I started hitting the bars at uh, 16. And we used to hit this local bar um, 
right up the road from the high school. And we used to hit it for lunch all the time. And um, then I remember one day we had a party for my buddy, a, a buddy of mine. And it was the same. It was an old dive joint. Um, and um, the, it was the same old fucking um, bartender. The guy had to be like 200 years old, you, you know. Um, and the bar was like cheesy. And um, it was all wood inside and, and, and just a real joint. And um, we were having a party for a buddy of mine. And um, and we were partying up in the bar, and the guy goes, oh, how old are you, Billy? And Billy goes, 21, and the dude's jaw dropped because we've been going to that bar for like five years already. And he's like, what, you motherfuckers? <laughs> it was very funny. Um, and what what's interesting is like even when I was 21, I looked like I was 16, but these guys, they ate that shit up, you know, but I did good work. Like I, I was good at forging, so I made this beautiful... Um, um, ID and yet you know like even the cops used to um, moonlight as bartenders and they'd shake their head looking at me handed they're like I know it's not good but it passes it, you know and they used to let me in um, into the bar so anyway yeah um, I, 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 I you know it's not even my age that's giving me the heart attack it's the miles on the body baby they were hard hard miles but I wouldn't change a thing I figured fuck it um, you, you know I, if I die early I'm much happier. As a matter of fact, I'm even cashing in on that Social Security early because I don't expect to live that long. And I'm not leaving that money behind for those cocksuckers, Democrats, to spend on bullshit. Um, and uh, don't worry, I have a lot of gripe about Republicans, too. I'm in the middle of the road. I hate them all. Um, so, yep, that's it. That's another, but I think that's a good frame of mind because um, it keeps my life interesting. You, you, you know, I'm not growing old and I'm living like I'm going to die, you know, eventually or, or pretty soon. So, you know, and I've geared up my life and, 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 and my trusts and everything like that because I'm, I, you know, you know what? I'd, I'd be surprised if I make it into my 70s. And really, I mean, I'm watching people age where, you, you know, half the time they're fucking dealing with doctors or taking drugs. Yeah, you know, life, you, you shouldn't need a support team to live. If you need a support team to live, the shit's over, you, you know? It's just this fear of death that everybody has, that, um, you, you know, Christianity has instilled in everybody, um, you, you know? Uh, and I think it's a misconception of what death is. And if you're comfortable with death, then you really have no problem living. You know what I'm saying? Nah, mean. So anyway, that's I'm a little I'm lamenting I'm not taking the boat this season because I like the adventure and I'm leaving the adventure. But I'm feeling greedy, man. I'm feeling greedy, and I, I think I want to do that. I mean, I don't think I want to jump in the master of the universe game again, but um, I think I want to do make some things pop off. You know, and it, 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 it it's a very strange thing. It's almost, I don't know, you ever been so horny you had to go out and get laid? I mean, you, you know, you ever get that in, in you? Um, or like it just, you go on a tear and you, you just, you, you know, all about sexual partners and shit like that. That's kind of the feeling I get um, with greed also. You, you know, like right now my mouth is salivating. I can't wait for the market to open. I am literally have a napkin in my hand and I'm wiping the corners of my mouth. You know, um, and it's just, I don't know, it's like a chemical imbalance, I guess. So I want this bitch to open. I want some good trades. I want to throw some money on the table. I'm holding back. I'm trying to be conservative on my trades today. But, you know, I want, um, you know, I want to trade um, 30 contracts and, you know, make tens of thousands a day. And, you know, and, and, and as I say it, it's like I'm getting hungrier, you know, like right now. I could barely speak without spitting. I don't know. It's sick, isn't it? Um, but, hey, that's what I went through when I was um, running the company, too. I mean, that's what it was all about. It was very fast, very dynamic. And um, I had to make shit happen. And, yo, you know what? I mean, you, you, you know, you make a quarter million in a day, dude. That that doesn't suck, man. That feels real good. And um, I don't. You, you feel like a king, you, you know? I dare say say you probably would have a, an erection or a chubby, yeah, you know, while you're doing that. And I do. I get. I mean, it's all all entwined, and that's why like Clinton and all these powerful people um, end up having um, these sex scandals because I mean, it's all it's all the same shit. Um, I have a 1911 
so no need for karate cap crap. Um, yeah, well, um, y you know what? Um, I have um, um, firearms also, and I believe in carrying um, a gun, um, but I'm not going to a bar where I'm drinking and tons of people are drinking and bring a gun with me, y you know? Um, so, I mean, and I believe in it's better to have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. And the idea of carrying a weapon is you carry it all the time because you never know when you're going to need it. But there are times that you can't carry it. Um, also, um, yeah, you know, like I go into business meetings, banks, things like that, especially in New York. I can't carry in New York. Um, yeah, I mean, God forbid you even say the word gun in New York. You'll have the whole Democratic Party up your ass. Um, so, um, so I mean, you, you, you know, it depends on your lifestyle, but you, you're all over the place. But um, do you still pal around with those kids? Seems fun time you had. It was a fun time. Why so many heart attacks? Uh, we are above. Um, yeah, Anthony. We, 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 um, yep. Um, broke trend line. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it looks good. There's there's some strength in the market. I'm looking at the uh, 30 minute on the uh, ES. Um, it looks like it's trending up, but I, I think I see a uh, reverse micro trend on that. Um, and it's way down low, so I don't know if it's going to hit there or not. Uh, overnight high. Oh, oh, you don't want to hear my stories anymore? Um, you can't bring a gun to a bar. Um, yeah, well, you can't. I mean, you can't, and what you do are two different things. I mean, you can't bring it into the post office, but I'm not yet, you know, locking my gun up because I'm going into the post office. I have it in my waist, and nobody knows, and that's it. Um, but, yet, you know, even like if I go to a barbecue or a beach party and, and I know there's going to be drinking there, I'm not going to do it. Yet, you know, um, somebody could see your gun, be a little drunk, a little ambitious, want to grab your gun just as a joke to play around with it, start firing. Yeah, you know, if the, if the guy's irresponsible, um, well, I mean, that's irresponsible right there. But, you know, if the guy hits somebody by accident, you know, you're on the hook. Yeah, you know, and somebody got hurt because you have your gun with you. So there's a lot of instances that it's just irresponsible to have a firearm on you. And, you know, I mean, honestly, people who own guns are, for the most part, very responsible with their guns and very considerate of, um, of, of, of the safety of their guns. Um, yeah, you know, it's the idiots in, in the news that, that um, you know, the politicians use to lobby how dangerous guns are. But, um, yeah, you know, what guns are all around you half the time. You don't even know it. Um, but th that's what you have to be aware of. You have, that, that's your responsibility. So there's a lot of times that, um, you know, open hand um, training is, is a good idea. Um, but I didn't get into karate for that, um, you, you know, for defense or self-defense or, or offense or self-defense. Um, I got into it because as a sport. And um, now I maintain it um, as a means of um, exercise. Um, and, and as I age and, you know, considering, yo, I've been in a lot of car accidents. I've been in motorcycle accidents. You know, I mean, I've been hard on this, um, the, 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 this um, uh, carbon unit. And, um, and um, th like, um, I don't have any joint pain or anything when I'm active. And, and karate does that for me. It works all of my joints. If I lay off for like a month or two, oh, man, I wake up injured, you, you know. But that's the age. You can carry the postal, post office, holy. You can carry it. You can carry in the post office. No, uh, well, maybe it's different in your state. In my state, well, no, that's a federal issue. No, you can't carry in any federal um, buildings. Um, yeah, you know, they're, they're, you can't even carry a knife in a post office. Oh, that's what you're saying. You carry in the post office. Holy crap, man. Um, well, I mean, it's not that I carry in a post office. I'm carrying and I got to go drop something off. So, yeah, you know, I run in and I drop it off. I run out. Nobody even knows I have the damn thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, if the, I start seeing um, metal detectors and obviously I'm not going to carry it. Um, yeah, you know, and I'm not staying long. I mean, the, you know, the, the exposure is, is limited. Um, way too many irresponsible gun owners. Um yeah, there. Hey, one irresponsible gun owner is way too many irresponsible gun owners. I'm in favor of uh, stricter gun laws. If you can't follow these simple rules, you should not have a gun. Yeah, I don't find any of the gun laws aside from New York, which says I can't carry. But any gun law that that defines my responsibility as a a a, a, a carry individual um, is fine with me. I don't mind the background checks. I don't mind fingerprints. I mean, I I don't mind any of that. Um, 
I don't mind, you know, and, and I promote that. And I don't think that people should be able to freely walk in and buy a gun, but I don't think it should be so restrictive that if you're not a legitimate um, law-abiding citizen, you can't own a gun, you, you know. Um, the the red laws, I think that's what they call them, where they determine, oh, the market's about to open. But anyway, I don't think I like those because they could be exploited by um, anti-gunners. You, you know, I understand the idea, um, but... Um, you, you know, you give an arm, they take a leg. That's the bottom line. It's going to be exploited. It's going to be misused. So I'm a little worried about that. Um, yeah, you know, those laws where they deem that you might be socially um, uh, or psychologically unfit and the judge could order that all your guns are, are, are repossessed. And because of those laws, they're promoting ghost guns, the purchase of ghost guns. So, you, you know, people like me who believe in all the laws and regulations and controlling um, the ownership of guns will actually go out and buy unregistered weapons in the event that you're in that position that somebody's coming to glom up all your guns. Okay, so we're opened up and um, I'm looking at the 30 minute on um, the ES and we already we put in a uh, tombstone and broke that to the downside so it's looking like a downside uh, move um, so today um, being an oil day um, I find that the markets are usually very very choppy on an oil day so I'm a little um, um, conservative and i'm in right now on a break of that low oh and it looks like i'm getting fucked well that's uh, too choppy too choppy i'm taking um okay i got a real small position all right i'm one off and i'm moving to a break even i'm hoping <clears throat> i'm hoping to get um well, you know what? I'm probably looking for my second off at uh, 93. Come on, sweetie. I'll probably get whacked out on that, but I'm one off right now. I got a buck and a half per contract. I got a nice fill. It must have whipped back on my fill. So I just got it at a break even. If it doesn't fucking run, that's it. I'll walk away. Because, uh, yeah, you know, again, it, it's not the most favorable. The Russell is uh, pushing up. Dow's dropping down. I need that uh, S&P to um, push down. I think it's going to turn around and knock me out. I'm, I can't get any support from the S&P. Oh, the S&P just made a bull flag. Okay. A bear flag, so that's a push down. And I got my second unit off. I'm at a break even, and I'm just leaving that last one to see if I could uh, close this gap. That was nice. So that's about 300 uh, contract on the second unit. So we're looking good. We're looking good. Three and one. So we're talking an average of 250 a contract so far on the whole piece. Ah, your sister's ass. I'm not recording it. Fuck. Oh. All right. We'll live and learn. I'll get the hang. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Get down there. All right. So we already, we, we hit the high. I just want to get, We. I mean, it, the target really should be 985. And... What do we got? Oh, the Russell turned around and is starting to uh, push down. Broke um, the lows of the day so far. That's going to take it down, Matt. We're going to get that. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, squeeze my stop once we get down to that 89 and see if I could take this down. Ah, you know what? A bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. I might just take it out at 89. Come on. I'm keeping an eye on that composite, and it's pushing its way down. It looks like the composite wants to close its gap. If it does that, it's going to really bring this uh, biatch down. We're already two off. Oh, 
I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Man, I can't believe I forgot to record that. That's two days in a row. Okay, it's looking uh, negative. Come on, I'm just, I'm watching for that little bounce on um, the composite. And then I might close it out. Oh, we're getting bottoming tails here. We might take a little retrace on this. Let's throw a fib in here and see. It we just clock that. Open this up so we can see it a little bit. <clears throat> so okay, we'll just call the number actually and get rid of that. Um, we're looking at uh, nine ninety six. We should expect a retrace to nine ninety six. That'll be okay. I'll still be in it, right? Oh, that, that's oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, I'm moving my stop back down to this pivot, so I'm locking in at 93 right here. I'm taking it at the 86. Actually, I'm um, I'm squeezing my stop again. I got my stop at uh, 990. Got my stop at 998, and I'm out. I'm out. All right, cool. That was a good one. So we got a buck fifty. <clears throat> we got three hundred and where's my fill? Yo, what's up with their reporting? And we got 700. Yo. All right. That's 1,000. 1150. All right. If you just did three contracts with Dave, you should have made 1150. That's really not bad for six minutes worth of work. What do you guys say? We get out of here and go to the bar? See, that's what I want to record because I send that shit around as an ad. And you got to be a monkey's uncle not to join me in trading. Um, Anybody take those trades with me? The ATF has no term for readily convertible. So he decided to test the laws and actually won. Um, oh, um, okay, you're still on firearms. Um, they're going to come for your stops. They're all going to laugh at you. Laugh at me? What the hell are you talking about? Are you crazy? Unfortunately, my father started the ghost gun in 95. It made him famous with the ATF. He actually, on the Discovery Channel, on the show, How States Get Their Shapes, with a pretty interesting show. Oh, dude, I'm going to check that out, man. I just fell in love with your dad. Um, how States... Get their shapes. What was his, what's his name? ATF has no term for readily convertible, so they decided to test the laws and actually won. Um, they're going to come for your stops. They're all going to laugh at you. That I don't understand. They're coming to go come for my stops, and they're going to laugh at me. I think you're critiquing my trading. Yo! Those are fighting words. Um, what are you going to execute? What are you using to execute your trade so quickly? Some of um, active trader, sort of active trader or whatever they call it in your platform. Um, they have a like a trader's uh, pro kind of um, platform. And um, I, I try to anticipate where the price is going to be and I go in with stops. Even on my execution... Um, I use uh, stops. So um, sometimes I get in a little bit earlier, um, and that bothers me because I don't like to be in before um, the setup actually triggers. But um, for the most part, I, I think at this point I'm, I'm, I'm fairly good. I know where the prices should be when um, I get in. Or sometimes I see it and I just go at, uh, at the market and just take um, you know, what they got. And um, when I see it coming, I get it preloaded, you know. Um, if I if I have a price or a limit, so you know my my trades are already preloaded, and I'm waiting to execute um, on the drop. 
And um, when I'm calling out like a uh, buck 50, 300, 700 um, and, and shit like that, I mean, it, it, it's it's an off the cuff. I'm not doing the math. I'm off. You know, it could be off. It could be a little more, a little bit less. I mean, yet, you know, a de minimis amount. But um, and then, yet, you know, when I'm executing because of the sprays and the movement, it's it, it it's an ish kind of thing. I'm getting hit at a dollar ish or five dollar ish. Yet, you know, shit like that. You can't try to really be precise on the price point because the spreads whip around and you could be waiting for your point and and you know it doesn't get off and then it goes the other way so um you just i mean that's another reason why you trade paper until you become this this um athlete you know and look at that man yo you got to pat yourself on the back for this trade right um i mean we got out at the right spot it's turning around um it's probably going to go back into a consolidation at this point um Rick Saletta. All right, Rick Saletta. He sounds like a clever man, as do you. Not typical Italian. <laughs> and see, I could say that shit because I'm Italian, but yo, you know a lot of these motherfuckers, they're just door knockers. Um, yeah, baby, look at that. That was a sweet trade. So, you, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this out and take a look at my five minute chart and um let's get rid of some of this mess right here we could leave that but um what time do we have Nine forty. so yeah we're 10 minutes in i'm feeling look at that man i think we're gonna, i'm not going to take that uh that break of the high if it does it i i feel like we're going to go into consolidation but i'm feeling like that's our low Yo, the composite is putting in some energy. This is kind of sweet, too, because I closed a couple of trades yesterday. Um, and, I mean, yeah, you know, I would have gotten less money today. A couple of um, um, bearish positions. I had some puts on SPY, too. I was aggressive on puts on SPY, and I did well on that also. That's another thing you could look at if you want to do something longer term. Um, I don't see a trend reversal, but when we start talking about trend reversals and shit like that, and we're looking um, for the market to do a rebound, um, you could go um, long calls on SPY or something like that, um, which is a cheap um, introduction into the market. I mean, if you, you know, if you're trading low dollars. So who took that trade with me? Anybody take that trade with me? Anybody? Anybody? It's fun making money. It's more fun making money with people. <laughs> the Tommy story. Um, think, um, mm -mm -mm. no, 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 no. All right, nothing going on. I'm just watching it now. Um, so, did we do it? Oh, look at that, man. That's a good... See, our high is a really... Why wasn't that in there? Get in there. Oh, I see what keeps happening. Ding, 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 ding. So, uh, this... Come on, get in there. That's the snap function. So, it looks like... I wonder if this is our opening range. We got a good good resistance right there. Yeah, you know, look at that. We we tested it one time here. We tested it one time there. I think I'm going to watch this five minute for a flag. If we set up a 
bull flag into this resistance, that's a really good trade. Um, it's getting a little overvalued, you see right here, as it heads into um, that resistance. So let's see if we can get um, some fair value and, and set up a flag. That would be a good trade to the upside. You didn't take it? Hey, what's up? Just another day. Oh, there it goes. It did a break. I'm waiting for a flag. I like the momentum, though. Uh, I think, I, well, you know what? It's getting overvalued right here. I think we're going to get a flag on it. Kind of sorry I didn't take that. That was a nice uh, nice push. I mean, yeah, you know, that's that's six points, one, two, three. That's a $300 move right there. Did you take it, Ant? I didn't take it. I'm going to look at the, Oh, it's not even making a flag. It's just pushing. I'm going to let it run. It's getting overvalued as it makes that push. Um, what is the, the composite starting to retrace right now? The Dow's starting to retrace. The Russell still has some strength, and, and it's not even at the day's highs yet. That looks like a fair flag right there. I might try that flag. I think this is a result of the uh, Chicago PMI. That just uh, came out. Hmm. Yeah, man. Um, if you have any questions, um, let me know. Um, happy to answer them. If we're in a trade, I won't be able to get to you. But um, yeah, you know, if we're hanging out and just watching the market, then yeah, I'm happy to. Um, oh, I don't like that pattern on the thirty second. That's uh, let's roll this down to the one minute. See what that's telling us. Okay, so we got a yeah, bear flag on the one, a bull flag on the one minute. We could look at that for entry. I think I'm going to wait for that five minute and see if I take that entry. I wish Thai chat had some stamps. I think we are like at least a minute behind actual live feed. Yeah, I'm working that out, man. I'm trying to find a solution for that where, you know, we could trade and, and be, um, uh, look at that. We're not even getting the flag. Fuck. It's overvalued again. Keeps popping into overvalued um, range. But I think um, there was a, a, a news announcement, Chicago Fed. You know what? Let me take a look at my dailies on the value and see what we're looking like. I'm going to actually swing that screen into uh, view for you guys. I think. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are uh, bar charts, not candlesticks. And you can see here where we ran over the value. This is a 60-minute, and then we came up. Um, I'm not feeling that bottom. Here's the daily. You can see the daily right here got overvalued. So this is basically a daily bear flag. Momentum is very negative. Um, so your bias should be um, to the downside. But we might make that 3,900. I mean, that's the target, really. Depends on how the day closes. But this is an inside bar for the day. So um, I think we got our best move of the day already, although that up move, I didn't catch a reversal or anything. I'm going to take a look at that and see why I didn't pick up on that. But... Um, yeah, the, the, the momentum is in a downtrend here, um, although we have a trend reversal on the 30. But big downtrend right here. Mm-mm-mm. 
<laughs> Get that chat back up. <clears throat> Doesn't work for me. Can you explain your reasoning for waiting for a flag and what direction flag? Okay, so I'm waiting for a flag because um, the market is overvalued and the flag will give it a, 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 like a breath, right? So we didn't get that flag. and We're actually getting a reversal doji. And if you look over here, you can see the overvalue. So a flag has a higher probability um, of moving forward, right? So that bust out, which was a nice bust out. I mean, I'm kind of sorry I missed that. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, my entry would have been around um, 403. I mean, the first bar alone went to 11. Yeah, you know, I mean, fuck. Yeah, you know, that's eight points right there. And so I would have had at least two off on this trade. It would have been a good trade. Um, but because it moved so far down, it started to show that it's overvalued. Yeah, you know, so that makes me a little apprehensive about how far it's going to move and if it's going to whip back and, and kick me. If it gives me a flag, then, you, you know, a lot, some people took profits, got out of it, and that's why it traced back a little bit. And then if it breaks again and, and triggers the flag, it shows that there's still um, enthusiasm in it and it'll run further. Because we didn't get the flag, we're getting these indecisive bars right now, right? So this baby may be at, yeah, you know, this may be the run. You, you know what I mean? I mean, this is like ugly um, and it may still run, but the manner in which it represents it, the probability stack against us. So I don't need to be in every trade. I need to be in the high probability trades. Flags are high probability trades. If this would have made a flag before it hit the resistance, um, that, that, that's a really high probability trade. And... Um, I mean, I would have loved to have taken that. Now, this is a resistance for a reason. It's a resistance because it tests it and rejects it. So um, the probability is that it's going to hit that and pop back. You, you dig? Um, so, you, you know, I'm not taking the first um, um, break or, or, or break right away off this bottom because there are stops here. You, you know, um, traders will force it up, eat up those stops, and then it'll retrace and knock those stops out. Um, and and that's the, the probability is greater that that's going to happen. Um, if there's a bear flag, prob probability is greater that it's going to bust through this resistance and keep going. Um, so the bear flag before, bear flag after. The bear fit flag before is just sweet, but the bear flag after is very effective. So all these setups are probability setups, right? So the, 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 the worst probability is that it did what it did right now. Um, that'd be the least, uh, the, the probability is least that it would do that, bust right through the resistance and, yet, you know, make that sort of high. Um, but it's still a good probability, but it's the least of the scenario. Um, hitting this, retracing, making a flag, and that flag ripping through, really high probability that that trade's going to run. You know, um, shooting up and making a bear flag here, um, high probability that that's a continuation pattern. This is not a good good flag. I mean, we still have time for this bar, but this is very indecisive, this bar. Um, this one's got a topping tail, um, so it looks like it's, it could be petering out. It may consolidate and then break higher again, or it may peter out and go the other way. Now it's just, um, yeah, you know, um, putting, throwing mud in my face. But... Um, it looks like it's gaining fair value over here. It's getting a little extended on this run, getting fair value. I see I have a resistance line of 17 right in here, and that's probably an old line from, oh, yeah, line dates back. I mean, I don't even know what it represents. Oh, here you go. Here's a double bottom at the 17, so that poses a new resistance. I didn't even see that. Yeah, you know, that would have been another reason why I would have backed off of it. But um, if we're building a, a decent, if we build a decent flag here, um, good probability that we bust through there, right? So, I mean, if we drop back to the 30, we could probably identify a top for that um, that 17 mark. No, I don't really see it. 
Oh, yeah, here you go. It's this bottom right here, and that's what we've hit. Starting the month of September on a downtrend. Um, ah, found it. Never knew that. Don't know what you're asking me, trying to. Um, what are you using to execute trades? That's old school, direct GM. Yeah, watching resistance broke. Can you explain your reasoning? Just trying to learn. Learn, baby, learn. Um, I wish that chat had stamps. Oh, that's what you're worried about. The chat does have stamps. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we're behind. I, I, I think we're about four minutes behind. At least when I use my stamps, that's what I see, about four minutes behind. So um, I'm trying to get something that works real time so we could, um, we could uh, execute together. Yeah, composites uh, coming back down. Dow's coming down. Russell's coming down. Everybody's looking to retrace a little bit. That's all right. We let that happen. Happen. Let's get this screen back where she belongs. Wednesday, Thursday. I really got nothing going on until Friday as far as uh, income trading. So that's cool. I could just focus on directionals. See if any uh, anything sets up. What time is it? It's um, ten o'clock, so it's too early for um, uh, um, a mid session reversal. And what do we got? We got uh, <clears throat> eighty six to fifteen, so thirty points. We could probably capture another fifteen points if we see a good um, reversal setup. So we'll keep an eye on that. What we want to do is see a double top with the um, the 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 Mac Daddy trending down, and uh, so we'll watch the two minute for that double top or the one minute. This baby is, should be my five minute. Pink. Where's my water? <clears throat> Am I out of coffee? Yeah, that coffee's done. Oh! Stocks up sharply on that news. <clears throat> Um, there's a latency, um, but um, y you know I could be normal or I could extend the latency. I don't think, um, but I think that's a matter of um, y you know the the ping. Um, so uh, y you know I think that's the latency that it refers to. But no, there's no delay on the uh, OBS. I mean the software is free. If you could download it and and look through it and guide me, I'd appreciate that. You usually have uh, pretty good ideas. Um, so um, if you find a resolution to that, that's cool. But, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to set up something where um, we, we uh, will be real time. I mean, I'm, I'm working towards that. That's, that's what, something I want to do. I want to be able to trade with you guys um, 
and just talk about what we're doing this way we could refine your executions and and um yeah you know everybody's making money and you, you, you know what i mean you know what i mean yet yeah, that that'll be my uh karmic deposit man i wish i recorded those uh those trades those would have been great uh trades to record fark I know once I hit that record button, it's going to be losing trades. That'll be my bloopers reel. Oh, just another day. Good man asking questions. What kind of candles in the top right chart? How do you read them? Okay, these aren't candles. Um, top right. So um, I, I'm this chart. These are um, these are bar charts, right? So let me expand them so you can see them. They're, they're, they're actually, the, these graphics aren't great in this software. So um, this is a bar um, can, bar chart. And the, the tab, you see that little nub right there? Um, sticking, pointing to the right, that's the open. And the nub to the left is the close. So um, this yellow bar right here, you can see, can I get rid of my crosshairs? I'll see it. All right. So um, you, you see where my line is right now. Um, that one is kind of um, just a, a tight doji. It opened and closed pretty relatively close. This one opened lower, closed a, a, a cunt's hair higher. Um, this one opened high and closed extremely low. This one opened high and is closing low. So these are bar charts, um, and that's how you read them. Um, and you could identify tombstones and, and hammers um, with this because like a hammer, um, um, let's see, do I see a hammer? Hammer, 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 hammer. Um, no, I don't see a hammer. Well, here's kind of a hammer, right? You can see the tail down. It opened here. It closed here. It's got a long tail down. So uh, again, they're bar charts. And if you look at your chart styles, it's so like right here, I can go to style and I see candles, candles with trend. It's open, low, open, high, low, close. That's the bar chart right there. Um, so that's how I see it usually titled: open, high, low, close. Um, but I know, um, you know, in industry we, we we call it a bar chart. Yeah, this looks like a hammer right now. You see that long tail, and here's the body. If it was a candle, this would be the body, and that, and you'd have the tail. And the tail's actually getting smaller at this point. The colors is um, a um, kind of like an RSI. It just kind of tells me whether it's overbought or oversold. And that's a little something, something that I uh, did on my own and had uh, um, a programmer kind of write that program for me. It's a little something, something. So um, when I see it's red... I know based on a certain period back, it's it's pretty overbought. Um, but, you know, sometimes that could reflect uh, um, momentum. So, you know, any RSI or overbought, oversold, it's all based on momentum. And sometimes, you know, you want to trade with momentum. But um, when you get accustomed to using it and um, with price action, you could kind of figure out when we're overbought or oversold. And that's a lot of reason why I take my targets, and sometimes I take my targets early um, uh, or take my profits early, and uh, the, it continues to run. But, yet, you know, again, it's a long game. So um, by a law of large um, numbers, um, my indicators will uh, make me profitable as opposed to um, just staying in the trade and letting it run. I'll become more profitable. You know, over the short, short term, it may appear that I'm missing huge moves, but over the long term, uh, net, net, it's more money in the bank. In the bank. Relative to that point, um, you, you know how I have, uh, I trade in units. I got three units. I take one off, um, move my stop. Um, if you log your trades, um, you, you'll be able to determine whether um, going one off um, or holding the whole position is more profitable for you over the long run. 
And really, it's not a uh, it's not a matter of the strategy; it's a matter of the psychology um, and and how you trade. So, um, given my psychology when I'm trading, um, and I've done both, I'm more profitable if I take um, one off. Um, at a target and then take a second off, move to a stop even, right? So um, it, over the long term, it, it produces more profits for me. Um, but, you, you know, um, in in one trade, it may benefit me. Like this one trade, um, the trade we took this morning, I could have had three units and seen $700 a contract. So, you know, a young trader or somebody who doesn't really document his work is going to say, oh, you missed out on so many, so much profits um, because I, I got um, 150 um, per contract and I got 300 um, per contract and then I got 700 per contract, a third, a third, a third. Um, but um, a, a refined trader who logs his work and, and analyzes his work may find that he's more profitable doing that over the long term. And I mean, I've done that. I mean, I've looked at um, the scenarios. And I, as a trader, am more profitable long term um, working in that fashion. And again, it, it relates to my psyche, yeah, you know. Um, so, and that's what I'm about. I'm not here to impress anybody or, or um, try to make home runs. I'm about, yeah, you know, consistent profits and um yeah you know big money comes in trading in size yeah you know so i stay conservative with big money and i make a lot of money you dig and there are hey there are some guys out there that are just um yeah you know superstars and um yeah you know they they make big money every trade i mean you know but for the most part um that shit doesn't last. And yeah, if you've been with me for a while, you know um, the saying, there are old traders and there are bold traders, but there are no old, bold traders. Oh, Anth is, is, is on a rant. Um, just trying to learn. Yep, uh, I wish to chat. Yep, yep. Can you explain your reasoning? Um, for waiting for the flag. Oh, man, I'm all past that. 41 is top. OBS, okay. Um, OBS, go to settings, advanced, enable, stream delay, and set it to um, one second. Um, okay, I'm going to write that down uh, because I can't get into settings while I'm streaming. I'm confident. Um, settings... Advance, enable, Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I appreciate that, Ant. I think we're going to have to bring you on board, man. You got promotion uh, ideas? Um, so, um, yeah, just another day. Um, yeah, but it's not an RSI because um, um, an RSI is... Um, like a histogram kind of function. Um, but this is kind of based on a, a Sh Shandela um, theory. So, yeah, um, so an RSI is always forcing its way back um, to zero. And um, it's more of a momentum um, indicator. And uh, mine is kind of builds on itself. So it's not always forcing its way back to zero. So like even um, the Mac Daddy is always forcing its way back to zero. So it'll have this aggressive move up and now it'll just be correcting for this. You know, it's coming down, but there's a lot of correction for that move up. So even if it went flat, it would still work its way down to zero. So, I mean, you need to have a good understanding of how the indicators work if you're going to compare the two. Otherwise, just get accustomed to trading them against price action and then um, th it'll work.
Hmm. Too early for the trend reversal, but it's eating up that move, man. I'm not happy. See, this is the choppy part, right? 10.30 is going to come out. We got oil at 10.30, and then we're probably going to see um, um, a better move. Yeah, I believe I do, man. I have um I have um um an alienware um um laptop or at least that's what uh, you guys are seeing right here. Um in the mornings I use a uh, um a server. Um and and really a um, a desktop. Um but yeah, th this I'm um, on an alienware which is all tweaked out and fast. So we're coming down to test the lows again. This, I'm going to get rid of this bitch right there. This should be, what time was that? 9.50, 9.55. So Binky, that's funny. There was a guy uh, in my high school. We used to call him Binky. Um... So now we're going between the trend. It might be a uh, uh, um, a, tre um, a consolidating day, uh, a range bound day. Um, well, yeah, I'm not going to go and drill it down and start uh, building my own computer at this point. Um, and, and I mean, if you get a computer that's geared up towards gaming, I feel that um, it, it's um, pretty handy um, and efficient for um, um, trading. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, the, the graphics aren't as demanding as um, some of the um, game platforms. And... Um, The, the latency is um, de minimis. So I've never found, actually when I'm on the boat, sometimes I have that problem um, because of the internet connection. Although over the past year, that's refined also. But um, yeah, you know, sometimes execution is a problem because of um, the latency, but that's, yeah, you know, that's about it. Never um, when I'm hot landline. And really that hasn't happened in a while because um, I've refined um, my internet connection on the boat. Yeah, yeah, it's a, but you know what? I mean, even when I'm streaming, it goes through YouTube, and I think that that latency um, um, goes through YouTube. So now I'm streaming using the OBS. Um, I used to stream um, and launch, manage the stream through YouTube. Now I'm streaming through the OBS. So I'm going to try these tweaks that you're giving me, um, but I think that there's still um, a hang-up in... Um, in um, YouTube, unless you found that some other streamers on YouTube are just real time and there's no nothing inhibiting it, then yeah, it's 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 my um, incompetence, but we'll work it out. The streets were flat. I hate when people end on a high note. What does your wife stream?
We didn't get a good morning from Tommy Williams. I wonder what he's up to today. Actually, the world's um, in full mode, so he's probably busy as all hell. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like we're range bound now. Well, you know what? Actually, we're testing um, the opening range low. And um, it looks like we're about to break that. But I don't like that break because it's just moving into yesterday's range. Huh, that's funny. You don't uh, you don't ask it. Last tweet, check settings output. Encoder section. Cool, cool. I appreciate it, Anthony. My TS market opening bell, 20 seconds before yours. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, yeah, it might be just the delay over um, this. I mean, I don't think my trading software has got a delay. Better not. Oh, I could get the... Uh that to open. Look at that. Um, Mm -hmm. All right, so let's let's try the chat now, man. I, I I was able to make the changes to the settings and decrease the delay. It wasn't enabled, so I don't know what the default uh, delay would be, but um, I enabled it and set it to one. So shoot me a text and I'll bark at you. Hey, um, um, just another day. Um, 
if you look right here, you'll see this is a hammer, right? So you see the open is up on top and the close would be that left hand tick and it's kind of building that hammer. So you could see the bar right here, right? So this is these are both five minute charts. Here's the candlestick, here's the bar, and you could see um yeah, you know, what it how it represents. And really I just do that because a bar chart doesn't have um a, a color um um indication. And um so my colors don't conflict with the colors of the bar. But, I mean, plenty of people trade on that. Like, the, the color is irrelevant. You know if you open high and close low, that's, you know, theoretically a red bar. And if you're trading price action, you could really just be looking at bar trend. So, you know, um, higher high, higher low, that's an uptrend. You understand trend, right? Just another day. I actually have some um, trading videos, too. If you go through the website, watch some of those older videos, you'll... Um, you can pick up some tips and tricks. I think there's a couple of how-tos out there. I have all these delusions of grandeur with um, educational videos, but no time and no support. Somebody shoot me a chat. See if we're real time. Oh, just in a yes. Okay. I just got your yes. Was that real time or not? I think that's what the only delay is, um, the chat. I don't think the um, the uh, stream is really uh, delayed. Thirty second delay. Yeah, it's a chat thing. Unless maybe I have to shut the software and open it again for those settings to take effect. Mm-mm. I'm sorry, I'm quiet. I'm just reading uh, some news. Actually, really kind of interested in what's going on with um, Ukraine. With the Ukraine... We need a smackdown on these uh, commies. Um... It looks like they're 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 um, making a move on Kherson and uh, choking off the um, the Russian army, and I'd like to see them start gaining some ground a little at a time. I'm trying to understand the Greeks and their effect on my day trading. Okay, so um, for day trading, there's really not a very big effect um, aside from the delta. 
um, yeah, you know, the delta is going to dictate how much of that move you're going to um, profit, right? So that's why I go for 50s. Um, so, yeah, you know, the market moves a buck, I'm going to get 50 cents um, yeah, per contract. Uh, not per contract, but per share. So I'll get 50 bucks per contract. So, um, yeah, that's the only, I mean, the theta would be um, the, the overnight, like what it's going to diminish overnight. Um, and that's really the only two I look at because, yeah, you know, that's what I use um, in my uh, long term or income trades. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. And if you want to minimize your risk, um, y you could go for a 20 um, delta so that, yeah, you know, you, I mean, if you go the wrong way, you're not taking as big a beating. You're not making as much money, but you're not taking as big a beating. Um so your capital um, means a little more. You last a little longer and you can refine your trades. Um, because I know the last time we were talking, you were saying that, you know, you're getting into the trades and you're getting knocked out, um, losing 500 there, you know, 500 here. So you go to a 20 and that 500 would have been a 250 or a $200 loss. So we're testing that um, that uh, intraday low right now. Composite's still positive. S P still positive, but the Russell turned negative. And you could expect the other markets to follow. The Dow is negative right now, doing a little bit of a retrace, a little bounce off the bottom. So I'm going to watch it. <clears throat> Actually, everything's probably just cool until oil comes out. Oil comes out in about a half hour, uh, in about uh, three minutes. It comes out at 10.30 on the half hour. Change over intraday. The value, well, you have overnight risk in the trade. So obviously, if the market moves, the value of that's going to move. Um, the delta, um, the delta will change. No, the delta is going to change based on um, where the market is relative to your strike price. Um, but the theta will change based on the time frame. Yeah, I do. Um, I do have um, um, battery support, um, and that's on my um, my internet access and my um, servers and, and desktops. So in the event that uh, we crash or, or I lose power, um, I'm good for a day. Yep. Um, well, uh, obviously the laptops have um, have um, their own power source. So yeah, you know, um, that's another reason why I like to uh, trade off of a um, a high powered laptop because it's redundant and that's also plugged into uh, the battery um, source. But if that goes down, I have access. But you should also have um, access. Um, use a phone app in the event that um, power goes down. You could jump to a phone app and protect yourself. Um, so I have that too. So redundancy is important when you're trading. Um, and then um, I, as you know, I have various um, accounts and use various proprietary software of the clearing firms, but I have all of it loaded on every computer. So no matter what goes down, I can jump to something and, um, yeah, you know, protect my interest. So we took, we had that break. I didn't get involved because we're just trading into yesterday's trade and I just don't like that shit. And, um, we're right before, um, the oil, um, report. 
So um, it's just too many variables for me to take a trade. Um, trying to build my own, but it's hard to find a switch that will switch fast enough so the computer does not go out. Oh, um, yeah, I've got the house on um, a generator, but um, I don't have a... Um, in the transfer box, I don't have an automatic uh, switch. But, I mean, I wouldn't fire that up anyway. It's so fucking loud. And, yeah, you know, I mean, in relation to what it's like up here. And then, you know, you're burning fuel, diesel. I just don't like the thing. And, um, I mean, we're never down that long. You know, they're pretty quick about it. Even in ice storms, I'm, you know, the most I'm down is 24 hours. I mean, you know, my swing trades usually aren't at risk. I trade with stop losses on those trades. Um, so, and I even have price targets, you know, set. So if anything happens on swing trades or long-term trades, I mean, you know, everything's in. My decisions are already in. It's my intraday trade stuff that I worry about. And again... Yeah, you know, my battery pack and my um my my laptop computer is fine. Fine, fine, fine. I mean if we're in an Armageddon I gotta fire up my generator, then that's what I'll do. Tesla is very choppy. Oil came out, really no move. I mean, we're in a downtrend on uh, the one-minute chart, clearly. Looks like we're, we're back inside the opening range. It looks like we're just range-bound for the rest of this session. The afternoon session, we might get something. I'm just watching a news article and it just like went out. When you say you built your own solar, you built your own panels or your setup? Well, Ant, I do oil in my um, morning meetings. Are you hitting those up? I think I might throw in natural gas, too, for a while. Because, um, you, you know, I know a lot of people um, um, go on it. But uh, I'll tell you right now, um, looking at the weeklies, um, we're at a major support right here, and if we break that support, and the support is probably 80, let me expand this chart. It's on another uh, computer, so I can't put it in the screen. Um, so um, 85.45 is my support, and um, we're trading at 90 right now on the weekly, and the, it's looking heavy, you know. Um, but really, I don't see us going much lower than 84. <coughs> And, I mean, I don't know how quickly it translates um, to the street. You, you know, I think it takes like a three or four month lag to translate to the street. Although, we see prices rise pretty quick. No, that's fuel. That's gas. I think there's a three or four month lag. Well, you see the futures and then you see it at the pump. 
Yeah, you built your own setup. Yeah, solar panel is uh, kind of hard. Uh, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good idea. Um, on the boat, um, I built a solar heater and real basic, man. I took um, a dock PVC. Um, I forget what the schedule was. The schedule four. That's gray and um, and um, s scuffed it up a little bit so it's flat and just put that out in the sun and that heats up great. I mean, you can paint it black, but I figure um, it's just going to chip and look like shit eventually. So um, I just used the dock gray color. Um, out on the deck and a nice long tube um, and boom it's uh, instant hot water man and and it's always reliable yeah you know and even maintains the heat through the night obviously not as hot as it is at um, yeah you know at five in the morning as it was at seven at night but um, still early in the morning I still have some very nice warm water and um, yeah really um, economical way to have some uh, hot water Um, and what's interesting is my solar panels heat up a lot underneath. So I'm thinking, um, ABS PVC is black. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll look at that. Um, so I want to see, um, how I could, I, I, I think I might get some of that PEX line and just zigzag it under my solar panels to absorb that heat that the solar panels generate. And, um, that might be another good source of, um, of outdoor heat. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. Yep. See, I'm thinking all these ideas. I'm sorry I'm not on my boat. But I got to keep that out of my mind and stay focused. Oh. Ten thirty six. All right, oil's out, and the market's just grinding. And this is where we should get the trend reversal. So I guess we could look. I mean, I'm trying to find another trade. I mean, we really can't bitch. We're in. We made money. We should just go fucking have lunch. Fucking have lunch. She's a looking good. Actually, you know what? I got a few other positions I should be paying attention to over here. Everybody's talking at me. I don't hear a word you're saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Biatch. Where do we go from here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we look like we're building a bear flag on the 30-minute chart. And we got about 20 minutes before that is over. All right. Nah, it just looks like it's consolidating, man. I don't see any anything that's giving me a real bearish inference, although the dailies look rather bearish. I think 3,900 is our target, ladies and germs. Not for the day, but I mean, I think we're going to make a bottom at 3,900. Because we had that daily bear flag trigger. I'm looking at the futures. We had a daily bear flag trigger. And then that bar looks indecisive, though. Yeah, it's, it's so reflective of the season that we're in. Quite frustrating. Um, 
just a doji on the weekly. Yeah, and that 39 I'll put in a nice bottom if that works out like that. I mean, can we hit 38.50? We might be able to hit 38.50. All day, just engineering my trades. Um, my panels get ho hosed down automatically in the summer every hour. Over the entire day, I make an extra 2,000 watts. One gallon of evaporating water can absorb 950 BTUs. Sorry, one pound of water, not one gallon. One pound of water, so that'd be an eighth of a gallon, right? Or one ninth of a gallon. I think it's nine pounds per gallon. Oh, one gallon is like eight pounds. Um, yeah. I think, is it eight pounds? Oh, yeah, maybe it's gas that's uh, nine pounds per gallon. <clears throat> mm hmm. Mm hmm. So we we broke out of that. Um, we we seem to be just testing the lower end of the trading range, uh, the opening range, right now. But yeah, you know, I'm just a slow grind, man. There's just no setups, no trade, nothing to do. Um, we can't really argue. We made good money on the way down. We should have gotten that. Uh, well, you know what? That it broke the support. Ran. Now nah, I was waiting for that flag. It kind of blew that trade on me. <coughs> But it looks like the party is over for the day, at least for this morning session. We're not getting a mid-session reversal. We got another hour left to the session. Momentum is just flattening. So would you have just gotten a few contracts short once you noticed the trend and just hold them for a bit? Would you ever? No, I trade setups. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not trading speculation. I mean, if I notice the trend, um, my bias would be short and I would look for an entry and uh, a target, you know. Um, just because I assume the market's going to go down, I'm not going to just put on a trade. But I may assume the market's going to go down and find a relative trade. I mean, you're getting a bounce now. You don't know what that bounce represents, you, you know, unless you have a setup or, or some reason, some way of identifying what's going on. Um, and now everything's bouncing into uh, the positive where everything was negative before, except the Russell. The Russell's still uh, negative, but looks like it's working its way up to go to go positive. So it just looks like it's a grinding day. Um, and you got to figure 40% of the time the market is range-bound. So... I mean, that's, that's a lot of probability fighting against you. I 
I mean, I don't agree with the trading philosophy of, ah, I'll just take a shot. You know, I'd rather something, a, a, a probability. It's like, you know, using a mirror to create a solar panel. You're like, ah, this reflects sun, gets hot. I'll give it a shot. I'll use this, see if I can generate power off of that. There's no science to it. Mm -mm -mm. So, like, I'm looking and I'm trying to figure out why technically um, we see this bounce, you, you know. Um, I could call this on the 32nd. I could say, okay, here's a cup and handle. But, yet, you know, I don't like that it's just this slow grind down and then a cup and handle. I mean, if we came down and made a cup and handle, um, that would be a better cup and handle. So, yet, you know, there's nothing here that's telling me there's going to be this move. And these moves happen because of a rumor or an alg algorithm or what have you. Um, but I'm not looking to jump on those things that I can't predefine. And, um, get, you know, because if I can't define why it's going to move up, I can't define what my risk is going to be. And y y to put just a dollar amount on a risk doesn't make sense because um, I could say, okay, I'm going to take a $100 risk, but um, it I may need, you know, it may, the, the, the trade may not break down um, until there's a $150 risk. So, you know, it may never hit that $150 uh, point, but I'm knocked out at $100, you know. So my risk has got to be defined on a technical. So to just say, oh, there's a trend, you, you know, uh, like a bar trend, there's, there's no reason for it. When I look back at these grinding days, seems like it would be a good idea to just short and hold it for the trend. I understand you don't have this hindsight in the in the moment, but it's more than I guess a guess. Okay. Um, well, okay. So when you look back on these grinding days, right? So the problem is when you get into a trade that you assume this is a grinding day, and then it turns out to be a trending day in the other direction. Um, that's where the problem comes in, right? And you don't need to be wrong a lot to blow up your portfolio. It's that one time that you have no rules and you're wrong big. And that's usually just one time that you blow up your portfolio. And if you look back, it's the blow up days that have knocked you out. And that's because of that, that, that um, philosophy. Um, you know, I'll just throw a trade on and this could be a grinding day. Well, what if you're wrong? Um, you know, when you have a setup, it's telling you that this is probably going to do this. And, you know, it's statistics and you get the probabilities in your favor. And that's why you don't just throw a trade on. Because, um, hey, you, you may do that and it'll work out four or five times and you'll think you're, you're, you're you know, a big swing in dick. And then um, it blows up in your face and pff, wipes your account out. And that's exactly um, how brokers get wiped out of the business or traders. You know, I hate that this chat only allows 200 letters. It makes typing a full thought really hard. I didn't even know it did that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's precisely what uh, knocks people out. It's like, yeah, you know, they don't have um, a set of... And, dude, this is a voice of experience, man. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I've done it and I've seen it thousands of times. Um, and it's those one days that knock you out, those one days that eat up your account, you know. You're trading with like $30,000 and one day you knock out $8,000, and um, then you get all desperate to do it, and the next day you knock out another two or four thousand, and you, you know, and you try to make that money back, and boom! Before you know it, you, you know you got you, you know enough money to go out to dinner, and you got to go back to work to rebuild your capital. It is a reality, and I'm sure everybody has similar experiences. Everybody who's listening.
in my off-grid trading universe. I didn't even see PR Yeti today or yesterday. That motherfucker must have went and got a job. Yeah, man. And you know what? You probably knew about it beforehand and still got caught up in it. And yeah, yeah, you know, and you can't beat yourself up over it because if you find a professional trader that says he never suffered from that, that's a lying son of a gun. Because, yeah, I mean, everybody gets caught up in that revenge trading. It's hard not to be human, you know, it's really hard not to be human. And I mean, that's what you got to do. Guess what? Yeah, that Dow is grinding up. The composite's grinding up. We're back in the um, trading range. We're actually at the midline of the uh, the opening range. Let's see if we get rejected at this midline. I mean, I'm not taking advantage of this. This is just grinding back and forth. I mean, you could um, look for a uh, retrace off of um, the midline of the opening range and then trade in that bar, but... I'm not going to do that. It's just a choppy week. We'll wait. September is going to have some volatility. It's going to have some momentum. We'll make some money. Some money. Try to keep the stream going and me active. I just, I mean, I guess that's my own discipline. I got to not get distracted. Today, it's it's okay that we uh, go on rants. And look, we're getting rejected off that center line. There's five points right there, really. But I mean, you know, what's the likelihood that you get in at the top? Not even a good entry. Maybe we looked at it on the 32nd. But look at that gap. <clears throat> so everybody kind of saw that trade. My shoulders are sore. Did a little shoulder work yesterday. Huh. Yep. Um, yeah, that's that's the beginning of everybody's business. But um, again, you should uh, keep a good... Um, log of your trades your thoughts and um you know work out the shit that's just not working for you because there's some shit that's working for you. you you know the problem is is that uh your repertoire may be too large i mean there's tons of entries out there tons of setups you just got to figure out what works for you. you you know and then um you could get um like subsets in what works for you and even refine that more. And you just want the efficiency, you know. If you can bring your um, your your um, accuracy to 80%, dude, you're going to be huge. I mean, yo, at 50% and you hold a two-to-one um, risk-reward ratio, I mean, you'll be huge. Uh, you'll contribute to the cause. little stick and carrot, huh? Um, so um, I'm working on it, man. I'll, I'll let you know. I don't like to uh, speak out of school, but I'm working on it. And um, we may be able to uh, interact better where it's almost like we're sitting at the same trading desk. I mean, that's my goal to get a bunch of guys, um, you know, where we're kind of sitting at a trading desk, a virtual trading desk and uh, just, get, you know, trading together. Um, I trained um, a lot of brokers in my day just that way, not virtual, obviously, face-to-face. -face. And um, 
I expect to um, do that with some traders. So that's what this winter is all about, man. So once I have um, the, the, the ability to do it, then um, I'll be talking to you directly, Anth. You've been with me um, a long time. So, um, yeah, you know, have no fear when I got it. Uh, that, that's my uh, direction, and um, you are part of the plan. I figure you're you, you could take the place of psycho broker. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, stick around just another day. Um Yeah, you know, we'll we'll teach you a lot of stuff. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you, you know, right now this is what we're doing, and uh, but I'm I'm working it out. I'm working it out. I remember when I uh, first started uh, my my um, my firm, um, I was working for a dude. Actually, um, I was working. If you ever watched um, Wolf of Wall Street, um, the guy that they said was a drug dealer, um, he wasn't a drug dealer. He was actually an arms dealer, and um, great fucking guy, man. And he and I became really good friends. Um, he, um, so anyway, um, I was working at another firm and he had hired me from that firm. And this is very early in my career. I mean, I moved up really quick in uh, my career at a young age. So he had hired me to run his firm and he wanted a legit firm. It was cool, but he was banned from the industry because, um, he had, uh, felonies for, um, running um, arms and um, really, yo, really sweet, sweet guy, great guy and beautiful. Like, you, you know, the guy was like six, four, looked like he was chiseled out of marble um, and just a, a great guy. So anyway, um, I was running um, his firm and he had partners and shit. And I had decided that these guys were just too dumb to make it. You, you know, that was the short of the long. And I loved it, this guy, but um, they were all just too dumb to make it. And, you know, I wasn't going to get tied up in their nonsense. I mean, you know, I'm smart and there's plenty of money to make, be made legitimately. So um, I decided I was going, I left them and I said, that's it. I'm going to go do my own thing, open up my own thing. And um, um, a bunch of um, brokers who um, I had helped at that firm, um, wanted to follow me. And before I had anything going, they quit their job. I'm like, dude, don't quit your fucking jobs, bro. I don't even know if I could get um, something going. I mean, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, that I mean, that's what this kind of reminds me of everybody. Oh, awesome, oh, awesome. But, yeah, you know, we'll just wait. If I, if I can get it all put together, then, um, yeah, you know, I'll let you guys know and we'll get it going. And then, yeah, you know, once we can get everybody up and trading, yeah, you know, who knows what we can do from there? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it could roll into a hedge fund or anything like that. You know, if we have a, a community of heavy hitting traders, I mean, there's lots of um, avenues in this industry we could exploit. But yeah, you know, again, talk is cheap. You, you know what I'm saying? It's easy to, to talk. You just got to get shit done. I mean, yeah, you know, and you got to get shit done with no excuses. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not an excuse kind of guy when I'm in projects and, yeah, you know, so... Um, so you got to have that mind frame, got to be a killer, a killer. Yeah. But that dude, um, the, um, he was a great guy, but, um, he, he, he died at, uh, he's, he had to be like 35. We were close in age. I think I might've been older than him. Um, but not much, but, um, anyway, I mean, this guy, I mean, you know, he was beautiful and he was chiseled, but you know, he would use steroids and shit and he wasn't like a big bulky guy. He was a long, lean, ripped, muscular, looked like a fucking warrior. And, um, and, um, I mean, like even his fucking toes had muscles, but it wasn't like bulky and you could tell this guy was dangerous because I mean, he was quick, he was agile, you know, um, and he wasn't like one of those meatheads. Um, so, you know, those muscle head looking guys. Um, 
it's like exactly what you would think a Navy SEAL would look like or something. And uh, But to get there, you used to use steroids and, and shit like that. And this guy had like medicine to help him pee, to help him sleep, to help him shit. I mean, he just fucked up his system. And uh, one day he went out to a club. He had a limo and everything. And uh, he went out to a club. He had his fiance with him and a bunch of guys. And he was partying. And he said, I don't feel well. I'm going to go to the car and just lay down. He went to the car. Everybody partied out to the night, went back to the limo. There he was, dead in the, in the fucking car. It was such a shame. It was such a shame. So that's one of my Wolf of Wall Street related stories. Now we're just bouncing between positive and negative, getting these little moves, nothing I really want to take. So we just sit here and tell stories. We can call it a guild instead of a clan. We'll call it the Guild of Calamitas. Calamitas. Well, you know what? Um, the Chinese don't believe that you should have any negative connotations in your titles or names. Um, not that I'm Chinese, but um, yeah, let's we'll, we'll we'll figure out what to call it. Something positive. I mean, we got to get there. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but yeah, you know, th these are just dreams. Yeah, the reality is we're trading right now like this. But um, yeah, you know, we're gonna we're working towards it. Let's see how this winter uh, lays out. Get a little community going. Now we're on the way down. We just poked through the bottom. Actually, we're getting a little aggressive here. Um, the five minutes on a downtrend now. Um, I don't know if I'm feeling this. I think um, I'm watching the 30-minute. And I might take the low. <clears throat> I think if we break that uh, 396, uh, 3960 area, 3964, we may have 60 points in it. I don't know if we'll see that today. Yeah, it's not impossible, man. 67 point day is really likely. Um, so I'm going to watch that. If we turn around here, then we're getting a, a bear flag set up on the daily for tomorrow, which is going to make a nice day for tomorrow. And before. The non-farm payroll report, you might see something um, aggressive. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm probably sitting on my hands until I see something trigger. And if you think about it, yesterday we took, um, we took a little trade, I believe, um, in the morning, if I recall correctly, because the days meld into one. So we took a little trade first thing in the morning, and um, you know, picked up a few bucks, and and then we sat around waiting for a daily um, setup to trigger. And on that setup, that's where we made our home run. Um, so the daily moves are usually bigger. Right now, I'm looking at this 30-minute move. Um, and then tomorrow, if we get that flag, I'm going to watch that, um, that, that daily bull flag. And hopefully, it doesn't trigger in the pre-markets. You know, give us an opportunity um, to get, get involved. But um, if you look at the uh, daily chart, actually, let me just swing it up. And you'll see what I'm looking at. Bink. A little hard to see because I got a lot of shit on that chart. A lot of shit on that chart. So um, that's another. Why can't I get rid of that? Okay, there we go. Oh, and now we open something else. Um, so um, that's why you use multiple charts too. Because I mean, I can put a lot of indicators on a chart. But I trade on price action. I want to be able to see the price action. So a lot of this, I couldn't trade on this chart. Because there's just too much shit. Um. But um, so here we got a long push down. I'm not too crazy about that indecisive bar. Another push down, and this one's creating a, a retrace. And if we close up here, I'm looking at that as a good um, 
um, a flag and look for a break um, tomorrow of today's low with a test on that pivot right there where my arrow is, and <laughs> away it goes. Away it goes. Um, okay, so that, that's an open-ended statement. The uh, MACD doesn't look good for a move lower, in my opinion. Um, on what? Because I'm looking at the five-minute, and the MACD's, um, MACD is looking pretty negative on the five-minute. Um, it's getting flat on that 30-second. And the two-minute, I mean, it's, it's not telling me anything. That five-minute looks negative. If I look at it daily, I mean, it's nothing but bullish. So what time frame are you looking at booby the 30 minute looks very positive it looks a little bit bullish not a lot of energy coming into it so that's why i'm waiting for a break of the low on the 30 minute um read the rest up top oh fuck you <laughs> um broke low um can we call it uh, a guild instead uh coming towards that low broke low my cumulative tick chart sh shot to minus 900 um, and show right back, shot right back up. I think it's a look below and fall. Um, MECD doesn't, oh, on your tick chart, it doesn't look. I'm not looking at a tick chart. I don't know. There's some previous resistance at 39.77. Um, yeah, I mean, you can find resistance anywhere you look um, on different time frames. Um, I've got that uh, 39.75 right there on the screen. That's a, that's a resistance. I'm just chilling until we get that low. Like I said, um, the 30-minute momentum doesn't look that um, that bearish. Um, I'm going to see if we can break that low down there. But it's now going lower. <clears throat> Cumulative tick chart. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at that. Um, so I, I think it works the same way that the tick chart ju does and how I'm accustomed and, and people I know use the tick chart, which is, um, you, you know, maybe you use a 500 check and you kind of watch the velocity um, or veracity of um, the tick chart. And it gives you an indication of, um, you, you know, the aggression up or, or down. Um, and do you know if there's energy in the move or not? But, um, yeah, I'm going to take a look at uh, a cumulative tick chart as an indicator and see how it works. But, yeah, I find them to be that to be a good indication. But r really, I mean, that's it's a momentum indicator, too. And you'll find that most indicators um, can go under a category. And, uh, you, you know, um, so a momentum indicator is um, one category that I would assume that the cumulative tick chart um would be categorized under things are falling apart russell's falling apart um looks like uh the s p is not going to give me that bear flag and it looks like it might break that low let's see if it bounces off of that low I'm just not feeling any trades at this point, to tell you the truth. I'm looking at uh, my five minute, and it looks like it's overvalued. And let me look on the dailies. The uh, 60 minute, oh, yeah, and the daily's overvalued or, or undervalued, extremely undervalued. Um, the 30 minute is um, fair value, so it could push down a little further, but it's not a trade I'm looking to get into. Actually, I think we're due for a bounce. We may get a trigger tomorrow of the, a flag and then bounce back. I made some shepherd's pie yesterday. Oh, it was delicious. Actually, I think after we hang up here, I'm going to um, work out 
and then I'm gonna get me some shepherd's pie. Yo, dove season opens. I don't do any dove hunting. Oh, here, this is interesting. Goose season opens. tomorrow Hike in Ashy. That's like a Renko chart, isn't it? Um, yeah, I've used uh, Renko charts or at least experimented with them. But um, it, it, I think the Henko um, Ashy is, is, is similar to a Renko. Oh, chronic waste disease is expanding in... Uh, Southern Pennsylvania. That's a drag. <laughs> no, 
I'm just watching the markets, man. We're we're testing the lows of um, yesterday, but it looks like we might be rejecting that. We're getting a little rebound in the composite and the Dow and the Russell. Yeah, we're just range bound for this morning session. Yeah, it just keeps testing that low and bouncing off. You see that on the five minute? We got three bottoming tails right there. So um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, move back to um, the opening range low. Man, I've been fighting a cold. Driving me nuts.
um, because there's no payoff on the spy. Um, you, you know, um, the, the, the contracts are small. The movement is small. The payoff is better on the uh, SPX. The volatility is better. So, um, but I mean, that's why I do it. But uh, there's no reason why you can't trade the SPY. Everything I'm doing here um, translates to the SPY. And if that's the dollar value that um, you could handle, then, yeah, you know, do that. Um, yeah, you know, um, no, nah, I didn't, I didn't fall asleep. You dirty dog. Um, <clears throat> I was watching the um, the uh, price action, just seeing what it was doing with that uh, low. Trying to, I was thinking about maybe taking that reversal, but I just didn't see the volume in it. You see the double top on the thirty minute right here. I was kind of watching that, analyzing the market. You know, that's what I do for a living. You know, I analyze markets. Um, so yeah, that's what I got caught up doing. Um, sometimes you have to post a question c twice cause they're easy to get lost in the chat. Yes, that is true, man. Um, um, have you ever used hiking? I think I answered that. Um, why do you like trading SPX? Um, he fell asleep. All right. So the other thing I want to do with the channel is have um, it set up where um, some people can talk right to me. So, yeah, you know, this way your questions don't get missed and, you, you know, you have direct contact with me. And, um, yeah, you know, we'll be trading together. Um, that's my goal. So just stick with it. Stick with it. You know, take what you can out of um, this, this uh, forum. And then we'll get into um, something better. Hey, what's up, Tommy? We were talking about you earlier, just um, how we were wondering where you were. And figure you were busy because the world has turned on again and um, needs your services. <clears throat> but, yo, we made some money today, honey. We had some really nice moves. If you did just three contracts, you would have picked up 1150 bucks. Oh, you forgot there was a live stream? Oh, how could you forget? You like my wife. I'm like third in line. Actually, fourth. <clears throat> you got the kids. Well, I guess third. First the kids, then the dog, then Dave. Oh, you got a big raise, hot dog. Office life is awesome. You got a big raise and a new position. Hey, Tommy, you know what they say. The guys slinging mud are usually the ones standing in it. Absolutely.
Yeah, she's not that good looking now. But she was hot back in the day. I don't give a fuck. Well, you can't spread um, ES. Yeah, the uh, futures directionals make sense, especially if you're under 25 grand. You don't have to worry about that day trading bullshit. Um, also, the tax advantages for ES are um, for futures contracts are pretty um, in inviting. Um, I think um, you pay 15% on 60% of your profit and 30% on the remainder or something like that. Um, but... Um, yeah, there's not a lot to learn about futures, Tommy. Um, yeah, you know, you're going to trade them on a cash basis. I mean, ES is a cash basis uh, future. Um, so you just could really could look at it as a uh, just like an option contract. Um, yeah, you know, one point equals um, 50 bucks on, on the contract. So it's 250 a quarter move. Um, Or 1250 rather a quarter move and um yeah that's it and uh, yeah you know that monthly expirations just make sure you go out the month um and they expire the third friday of every month um if you want to know what the front running contract is um i mean you could look at any public quote and they usually quote the front running contract and um your, your um, brokerage is going to give you an indication if you're if you're um, clocking um, futures, it's going to give you an indication of when the contracts roll. So right now I'm looking at ESU 22s, and those are September's. Um, and September um, contracts are going to roll. It'll probably roll out three months. So we'll be looking at December's, and uh, I don't know what the acronym is for uh, the December, but um, yeah, you know it's all standard. You'll find a list of uh, what um, month indicators are. Yeah, the minis are good. Um, the only issue with them is um, they're expensive to execute. So, um, yeah, you know, the commissions kind of eat into the move. But it's good to get started and um, reduce um, your exposure and your cost. But if you're executing a lot, um, you may find that... Um, that they're eating in, but it gives you the opportunity to break up into units if you're using um, um, small dollar amounts and, and get your exposure. Um, so um, I, I experimented with them and um, I found them adequate aside from the uh, cost. Um, and I know they're used often, but um, I mean, I, I, I could handle the ES, so I'll go with, go with the ES. And, I mean, it, it's fun money at that point because um, I think uh, the ES, the margin uh, requirement is 500 a contract, and the MES, you could, uh, it could be 50 bucks a contract. I don't know what toss um, um, margin requirement. Actually, Anthony, what's the margin requirement on one contract in toss? Well, you know what? Um, I mean, I guess it's all subjective, Tommy, as far as uh, the cost. But um, 
I when I did it, it was in Ninja Trader, and what they were charging per contract was um, pretty aggressive. Um, <clears throat> so, watch your verbiage there, Anthony. Um, six bucks an option or a contract? I think you're talking about the uh, the the minis um, contract. Margin requirement is 500 bucks on one um, contract of ES and TOS. I think trade station is like $2,500. Yeah. Well, you probably find it on their website, but that's cool. Sound like an old guy. You're dating yourself. I'll call them. People don't talk to people anymore, man. What are you doing? Get with the times. Yeah, we're just churning around. Um, I mean, look at this this chart. For three days, we're just grinding around here. That's um, that's due to non-farm. We got non farm out there. We get that out of the way. We should get some volatility. September's coming. Should be a volatile month. Oh, um, so when you said margin requirement is five hundred bucks, are you talking about MES or um, ES? So, yeah, I understand you need $500 in the account, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's $500 to trade the MES. Because I know on um, NinjaTrader, um, it's 50 bucks to trade the uh, MES. Okay, you have to have 1500 in your account to trade ES. I understand that. But how much money does it take to trade one contract? So can you execute um, you should if if the margin requirement on ES is $500, you should be able to execute three um, contract three contracts at a time. So how many contracts can you execute having $1,500 in the account? See, I guess that's what happens when you call people, Tommy. Yeah, look how we're respecting that low. The 30 minute looks like it's going to break that hammer. What do we got? 35 minutes.
No, why would that? Uh, that no, no. The, the 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 margin call on a contract is not relative to the price of the contract. Um, it's not like an option where the price uh, varies. Um, yeah, you know, the margin call on a contract is is, is pretty standard. Um, so. You know, if you're buying um, at a contract at thirty nine eighty eight, dollars um, your margin call is going to be $500. If you're buying the contract at 4000 your margin call is going to be $500. So the, the margin on a um, on an, uh, futures contract is not relative to um, where the market's trading. Hmm. All right, we got uh, about 20 minutes left to um, this this um, stream, and the market is just uh, grinding back and forth and back and forth. So I'm not sure of that then, Dave. Um, Um, well, the amount of contracts I can execute would depend on the cost. All I know is I need a minimum of 1500 in order to trade at least one contract. So, yeah, they, I mean, um, yeah, yeah, there's a minimum um, requirement to have in an account, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the margin on the contract. Um, so, like, next time you execute a contract, look back at your buying power and see if you have buying power and the ability to buy more contracts. Because I think you should be able to buy three contracts with the 1500 But once you dip below that 1500 they're going to sell out those contracts. Um, Well, yeah, I got you. But um, yeah, Ninja Trader directs you to um, a couple of um, clearing firms that you could trade through. But yeah, I mean, I've used Ninja Trader software and executed through um, um, uh, uh, or, or had um, IBD clear my trades or, yeah, you know, some other person clear my trades. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me, everybody. Um, I appreciate everybody uh, stopping in, hanging out with me, checking me out. Um, I'll tomorrow morning look for um, my morning market meeting. Um, I try to get that out before seven o'clock, and then we'll start up again at nine o'clock. Hopefully, I mean two days in a row, um, or is it three days? We started Monday, right? Yeah, I think we started Monday, and I think we were profitable all three days. I think Monday was like a hundred and fifty dollar day or something like that. Um, but yeah, we've had a good, uh, good, good three days so far. So stick with it. Um, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like. Hopefully, I'll get to see everybody again tomorrow, and um, do this again. So um, watch for the afternoon session. Um, what I'm looking at, I'm I'm really watching um, yesterday's low. I think we're just going to grind around. Um, tomorrow may be more of the same because we have a f um, non-farm on Friday. But, um, hey, we'll take it as it comes. Everybody have a good afternoon. And... Um